So, God sang. Whoa, slow down here. This is a restricted area. I'll need to see your ID. Calm down, I'm from maintenance. Just here to replace some lights. Not like I stole this uniform or something. Now, if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Between you and me, sometimes security can be a little overkill right now. Anyway, won't hold you up. Nice. Nice. Okay, so I do have a lot of bits and pieces here. There's your security, right? Yeah. So we probably want to put that off as long as we can. In danger, in use, do not enter. What are you? Containment lab, right. What do we have, mission item wise? We have access to the lab 12. And that's it. We've got two different codes for lab 12. What's the Scion thing? Oh, communication data store. Scion and protocol. Gotcha. You are what? The VP of Thaumaturgical Research? Hello? What happens if we just go over here? Hey, Izzy, you want to check in here? Yeah, we'll give you a boost then. Because we found out that we could... What the hell? Security? Okay. That's fair enough. Apparently, apparently you can't just do that. Who knew? Alright, maybe, maybe we should talk to someone. <laughs> Gonna do this without activating security, thank you very much. Okay. So, go through here again, calm down, not like I stole this thing. Okay, let's try not going straight to the VP's office. We want to get in there eventually. What were you again? The Thomo Lab. You overhear a masked man in a lab coat mumbling to himself. After a moment, you realize he's narrating his actions. With a flash of his pen, he approves the incoming lab expenses. Science shall not suffer at the hands of the miserly department heads. No, not on his watch. Such fiery acumen, such daring. He runs a hand through his luscious locks of stubble. The women's wound, the men's wound. He is metahumanity's last hope. Um, hi. He shoulders stiffen in surprise. Uh, he makes a small sound and looks at you. You can't tell if he's angry or embarrassed. Uh, hello? Hello? Oh, how long have you been there? Actually, never mind. You're here to fix something? Just found out we got the budget to make some upgrades, so I'm checking in to see if your station needs any modifications or equipment installations. Look, I do very delicate, compli delicate complicated work here. Last thing I need is a bunch of bumbling maintenance slubs jeopardizing my work. Hey, hey, I get it. Judging by your equipment, it looks to me you're exploring the effects that extraplanar beings exert on our realm, with a focus on investigating the energy sources. Not something you want bumbling custodians to interfere with. You, you can see all that? No one else gets it. How crucial this project is. It's been so long since I've met anyone who understands my work here. You don't know where to begin. It's genius, really. Well, I invented it, so I'm the genius. But the contraption itself is nothing short of spectacular. It uses advanced sonar to, in layman's terms, etch out an image of the astral plane. But instead of refracting off physical objects, it refracts off magical energies. Interesting. I know what you're thinking. But why are you digging around in natural space, Wendell? Unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to discuss those details with you. I've been entrusted with this task, and I take my job very seriously. Is that right? I know. I can see the disappointment in your face. I suppose I could at least tell you where I store the information. The sonar scans are also cleverly transcribed into a separate terminal that's constantly updating the results. This technique allows me to paint a picture of an abstract space. Revolutionary, wouldn't you agree? Yes, yes, of course you do. You do understand. Yeah. I guess. 
I'm sure you're wondering how I use this data to discern energies of value from the nugatory ones inside astral space. Well, it actually relates to my sonar system. A minor adjustment that I made to the sound wave features refine uh, to the sound wave feature refines the oscillation signal and in turn alters my results as a sound percolates through the other plane. Only energies of substantial magical strength provide enough resistance for the terminal signals to refract information back to my terminal. Huh. To be perfectly honest, I actually got the idea from a video game, Magic of Evermore, The Awakening. It was incredibly popular a decade ago. Have you played it? No, no, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have played it. You already get it. We're kindred spirits, you and I. Just like Balgar the Great and his Puck's face friend, Pukok. Tell me more. <laughs> well, part of the Meta's battle system involved an other world where fights took place in complete darkness. You had to do a sweep attack with your ringing axe to see the opponents. The audible attack would pass through lesser objects, but not in the not the active energies of your en enemies. The gameplay was crap, but the concept was there. One day, on my 239th playthrough, I realized that its mechanics could be applied to an actual real-world system. It was plausible. Imagine that. I don't want to brag, but there's no other scientist in intra-astral research who could accomplish what I've done, built it from the ground up. Myself, I've named the sonar system BALS, bridged astral to letter document sonar after Meta's hero, Balga. He smiles wide, looking thoroughly pleased with himself. He must be very proud. I can feel like I can talk to you about anything. You know, I rarely had that growing up. Everyone was so impatient with me. I can't imagine why. Obviously, I was a child prodigy. I never outgrew my genius. But that didn't seem to make a difference. My parents, classmates, or teachers, no one wanted to talk to me. But when I finally got to university, the frat boys were so intensely jealous of my success, they used to bully me. One in particular harassed me mercilessly with names like Wendell and Vomit Voice. Damn you, Chad Bronson. You know, I started wearing this mask soon after I graduated, which I did early, I'm sure you've guessed. So many people would think I'm sick and uh, so people would think I'm sick and be friendlier. But even if they start out friendly, the second I open my mouth, they shrink away. I know it's my intellect. It intimidates people. I just wish they could see past that. See me like you do. Yeah. You know, someone with your sharp judgment could easily rise for the ranks here, especially with my recommendation in your files. That's that's generous of you. Give it some thought. I, I really shouldn't be doing this, but I like you, so if you promise me, promise me you won't tell anyone, I'll give you the code to our containment chamber. We'll hit the astral jackpot in there. It'll blow your mind. But I'd be seriously breaking company ordinance, so I promise, Wendell. Just don't let anyone see you enter, right? <laughs> I love that. That was so good and so terrible at the same time. All right. Yep, yep, that's social engineering. So, hey, lady. Who are you? Maintenance ma'am. What do you want? Just doing a routine checkup. Um, I was sent up here to investigate a strange smell. Have you noticed any unusual odors around here? Everything's fine. Now get out before I call security. No need to get angry. I'm leaving. Rude. I'm just going to do a bit of cleanup. Ooh. Take. Gubby. What? Really? Gubby can't take it. Fine. Stash it is. Really? 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 Fine. I won't take your stupid spell. Just yet. First, I'm going to release whatever you have in containment. Then, while you're distracted with whatever disaster I've unleashed, then you can do that. Okay. Let's see. One moment. Um, all right, let's go to that containment lab. Enter code. So the containment is one nineteen fifteen. Nineteen fifteen. 
Nearly soundless, the door slides open. Research console. Okay, research journal. Most of the entries are dated, containing information on the various experiments performed on Sang's subject, but one stands out, a newer entry regarding the health of the subject, which appears unnamed. For unknown reasons, it's getting sicker and sicker. No amount of Sang efforts have been able to reverse the ailment. And res containment breach response plan. Should a breach occur, all containment doors will close and the emergency door control will be routed to this terminal. Additionally, if the subject escapes this floor, a rapid response unit is on call for immediate deployment. Lab controls. Open shutters? Oh, hi there. With a metallic grind, the shutters open to reveal a massive nightmarish beast. Yet despite its daunting size and presence, its body is wasting away. It looks sickly, frail. From one strong limbs hangs loose flesh with eyes sunken into its gaunt face. A thin fluid drips from its eyes and nose into its mouth and off its chin. Around the cell are small puddles of the same substance. Some even splattered across the walls. A putrid prison. Okay. Alright, what I'm going to do... Then, is it going to quick save? Then I'm going to open containment. Proceed. Proceed. Yes. Release the primary seal and open the head of research office. Lady, you should have thought about this before. Before you called security on my ass. Oh, it's dead. So, well, someone's on the ball. I hadn't even had a chance to call the janitors. I only just killed her too. How did you... No, never mind. Just get rid of this thing. It's leaking all over my Persian rock. I'm your man, but you want to leave for this. Things are going to get a lot worse here before they get better. I... What do you mean? Uh, no way you can get this thing through the doorway, so uh, some dismemberment's going to be required. I don't need to know the details. You do what you have to. Just get it out. I'll be waiting one of the spare officers. But don't throw this body away. Put it in cold storage. Maybe we can still get something out of it. Nice. 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 I'll take that. And this one. Uh, let's, I think Gobbit can take that. I really hope Gobbit can take it. Come on. Gobbit. Work on your spellcasting, lady. Okay, easy. Get in there. Yep, I have Izzy Jack in. And take boost with ya. Alrighty. Okay, right. Hi there! Let's summon one of these. I normally never use them, so, you know. I've just never seen the point in investing that much effort in them. Okay, let's see. What do we want to go to? We'll go to the Special Operations Archive first. Alright, let's start. 9717. Whoops, uh, clock, clock, yep. Uh, clock is second last, M. Um. 
This? Yes. Good. Good. Did not mean to go in that quickly. Would have been awkward. A small dot archive node springs to life. It appears to be a set of mails tagged to a special, uh, a reinitialized data center. Data center is labeled special projects. Read the mails. From Joseph Insang to David Yu, progress report. Talk to you. I expressed in person the assist based security project is on an accelerated timetable. As such, I require regular updates to track progress. What's the status of the device? Mrs. Tang, please forgive my lack of proactive communication. I've been working around the clock to meet your timetable and was ignoring my mail in order to focus on the task. The Lab 12 has already been refitted to support the assist project and I have s several noted experts on memory modification contracted. The security project is ahead of schedule despite the timing concerns I articulated in our initial conversation. I must stress, however, that even though we are ahead of schedule, the operation's probability of success is low. I just wish to set the appropriate levels of expectations. Continue reading. I am pleased you're ahead of schedule, Dr. Yu, Mr. Yu, but let us be clear. My expectations are already set. I expect success. Mrs. Stang, whether it's a simple memory wipe or even a straight replacement, i.e. swapping a one discrete memory for another, my confidence would be quite high. The documentation and techniques are mature and well documented. The process of replacing a seminal event in a subject's timeline and then revisiting its myriad downstream memories is daunting work even in an open-ended time frame. Given the duration for the task, I cannot, in good conscience, predict higher than a slim probability of success. Deal with the seminal event with the, within this prescribed timetable. Edward is 65. If the downstream of memories appear contradictory or confusing, we will treat him for a medical condition linked to senility while we work out the bugs. Yes, madam. Nice. So, like, yeah, they're trying to write a hi a new history for him. And that's going to be difficult to do. Alright, now let's hack this shiz. Seven five eight four. Three one seven one more. Nine one seven eight five next. Okay, this that maybe? No, there's an M. This Yep, 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 yep. Definitely. Open her up. Only a small quantity of data resides here. The file header says something about a shutdown procedure for Lab 12, but it's bogged down in technical terms and code names that make understanding the contents of the file difficult. However, one data block clearly contains a few passphrases. Excellent. That's all there was there, so... Alright, now let's see what we can do here. Recently been upgraded with a car key. Ah. I wonder. Firstly. Anything cool here? No. Lab controls. Go back. Nothing we can do. Right, so we could have potentially sent it in here. And I guess it would have killed things there. But I think we overall did the right thing. It's that or like deliberately create a security incident to try and get them out. And I don't think that's worth it. We just will have to only get two of them. Enter a code. What we want is we want four four five two six. And the second sequence. Buttons are left on yep, enter the second code. And that one is two five three zero oh, one. Lab 12 it is. Um, alright. I guess we quick save, we save, we do a hard save. 
I mean, the thing is, one of the actual kind of neat things about this game is that you can rewind all the way back. So that that isn't actually that big a concern. Lab 12. Off we go.